Welcome back to the wood shop. Today we're having a moisture meter showdown between the Eric Hill pin type pocket moisture meter and their brand new pinless style. Stick around and see which one's right for you. So down here I've got a couple sample pieces. I've got a big, very pretty piece of cedar down here. We're going to split all this up. I've got a piece of apple here and some walnut. We're going to check all these today. So let's get this thing fired up. As you can see here, I've got a beautiful piece of red cedar here. I've got both moisture meters set up. We we'll go we we'll go with this pin type first and see how it measures. As you can see there, now you want to move around a little. Just to double check everything. So we're hitting right around 12, 13 percent. Let's go ahead and try out this new pinless moisture meter. And I do have this one, as you can see, set on softwood because this is way softer. In general, you would think something softer like this would dry out quicker than something with a very dense grain like oak or possibly even walnut. Let's go ahead and try this one out. Okay, it was 9%. 11 percent 11 a little higher here possibly because of this big knot eight yeah fairly high right there there again we've got these knots it could be a lot to do with it <laughs> You can see I've got this fairly large piece of walnut cut up here. And this one may be the one that tells the tale just because of how thick it is. Let's go ahead and try this pin type. Okay, right there we're looking about 17, 18 percent. 18. Yeah, it's hitting about the same all the way around. So let's go ahead and try the pinless one. Now as I said this one actually picks up at a depth of two inches so let's see how high this one is and as you can tell I have it set on the hardwood setting. So we're almost 30 percent and of course you can hear that beeping it's telling you that it's quite wet. Yeah so we're running about 30 percent. Fairly wet piece of wood. Now this would be good if you're doing wood turning to go ahead and turn this wet. Let it dry up for a little while and get, then turn it once it's dry. But to use this as a finished piece you definitely want to let this one dry out a little more. <laughs> Now this piece is a very small piece. It's a piece of apple. Uh, and if you've never had the chance to work with any apple, it is beautiful. I've turned some bowls out of that and it's absolutely stunning. Let's go ahead and try this one. It's a very small piece. It's all I've had available at the moment. We'll go ahead and put this one in here. 11, 12, that one's actually a little over 10. And then the pinless one again. So 13.8, 12%. So that one seems to be staying pretty consistent. So I would imagine this piece has been down here a while, pretty dry. You could use this for spindle turning, something of that nature. As I've said in many of my build projects and wood turning videos, knowing the moisture level of your wood is essential. 
you get something with too high moisture content, you're going to have warping and cracking, all things you don't want to be doing, especially if you're doing this for a customer. So the folks over at Eric Hill has sent me this brand new pinless moisture meter. We're going to compare this one to the pin type, see how those things work out. And just for that reason, they have actually given me a discount code to pass along to you guys over at their Amazon store for this exact one. Now, it's already a great price. Punch in that discount code and get 10%. And that's going to August 31st of this year, and I'll link that below. A big thank you to the guys over at Eric Hill for providing me both of these moisture meters. If you need to check moisture in any of your projects, go check them out at their Amazon page or their website. So we got some pretty interesting readings today, I felt like. Both of these, as far as I'm concerned, are both accurate. Now let's go over a couple of pros and cons on each of these, uh, because there are a few. Okay, as far as the pros on the small one here, what I really like about this one, it's easy enough to tuck in your shirt. If you're down there messing with both hands, you know, trying to pick through a piece of wood, it's easy enough to store in your shirt pocket or your pants pocket. So I really like that about it. Uh, like I said, comparing to this one, it's pretty doggone accurate, at least, you know, for the thinner stuff. Uh, just a couple AAA batteries, so it doesn't take, you know, anything crazy to power this one up. Uh, as far as my negatives go, uh, if you, I were to show you this particular workpiece in checking the moisture levels, the pin type actually does leave a couple of divots in here, so you may be scarring your workpiece a little bit. But you could always check it in the edge grain and the end grain to hopefully get a better reading. That way you don't scar up your piece. And as for the positives and negatives on the pinless type, uh, there's a lot more positives than negatives on this one. So also it doesn't take a lot to power this. Just This one actually uses three AAA batteries. In my opinion, this one is a little easier to figure out too because there's not a lot of settings where this one does not tell you on it softwood hardwood you just have to remember the number that you have to click on uh, and that if you throw away your manual you don't know exactly which is which this one is very easy has it labeled right on the side hardwood softwood that kind of thing so that's a big plus on this one so this one seems to me that it's more accurate than the pin type because like i said it can actually go a deeper depth up to two inches below the surface. Also in comparison to this one, as I said, this one, the little pins can actually mar your workpiece. Because this one's pinless, you don't get that defect going on. Uh, and as far as any negative I can think about this one, I really can't think of a whole lot. Uh, if you want to compare it to this one, it's just the fact that it's bigger. Uh, not a big issue, I don't think. Uh, one negative I thought may be an issue is probably the way I'm holding it though. Uh, you may notice in a couple of the scenes here, when I move this around, there's actually no number that would pop up. Uh, like I said, maybe that's the way I'm holding it or I'm just hitting a dead spot, something to that effect. Uh, but even still, just moving that thing around, you're going to get the, the reading you need. So I really wouldn't count that as a negative. So there you have it, guys. You can see as we concluded this test today, we've got pretty accurate readings from both of these. However, I think the clear winner, in my opinion, is the pinless type because of that depth it can go to. You know, it can pick up even more moisture than this one does. Either way, I think both of these are going to be a great addition to your workshop, whichever one you choose. Uh, but as I said, I'd try the pinless one. Don't forget to check out the discount code on this one. I have that linked in the description. I also post it up on the screen here. Once again, a big thank you to the guys over at Eric Hill for providing me with these to show them to you guys and see how cool they are. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff that YouTube likes. We'll see you on the next video.